Yep, yeah, we're on. Fish on! Oh. 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 Fish on. Something big. Something big. It's pulling me fast. Fish on. Oh my God. No way. Oh no. I gave up the corporate life to pursue my passion for kayak fishing full time. And a few times a year, I head to Los Buzos Resort in Panama. There I serve as a guest guide, helping anglers figure out one of the most epic fisheries on the planet. Trophy rooster fish, bro. It's a tuna, we got a tuna. You're watching Field Trips with Robert Field. The land of giants, look at the Panama! All right guys, so we're back here at Los Buzos Resort on the southern coast, the Pacific coast of Panama. One of my favorite places in the world to fish. It's day one out here, we're launching right now. We got about four kayakers in the water so far. Uh, I'm here with Mike Ponce. Who you guys probably remember from some of the Fish Village trips, like the San Clemente Mothership trip. Two of the guys every day are gonna be going out in the Pongas, heading out to an area we call the Lump, or another area we call Punta Blanca. The rest of us will be fishing right here in front of the lodge. Killer fishing right here. This is where we get most of our big rooster fish, Cabrera snapper, etc. Uh, this is kind of the end of our window, so I gotta get out there. Hopefully we can get on some fish. It is just like as far as the eye can see, Bonita jumping out of the water. On your left hand side, you'll see the bustling metropolis of Kambutal, known for its trendy cantinas, fresh produce, and its beautiful women. There we go, I'm on. Bonita are not that big, but they are strong for their size. They're built just like tuna. I'm using a pretty heavy rod, much heavier than I need for these fish. And that is very intentional because you don't want to fight them too long. The longer you fight them, the more they wear themselves out, the less time they'll actually live. I'm just going to go straight through their nose, the top lip. So when you're trolling a live bonita, at least in my experience, you have to be pedaling non-stop. These are pelagic fish. They spend their entire lives swimming. They do not stop to rest, I mean, ever. If you stop trolling these things, they'll die. And now, you know, looking at that bait, you might think like, geez, that's a giant bait. But out here, there is no such thing as too big of a bait. You want your drag really loose on live bait so that when it gets hit, that fish can run with it and doesn't know that something's up. Man, there's bonita busting just everywhere over here. The bonita are thick out here and now really, that's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. You know, you gotta think about it. If there's, let's say a million bonita out here in this area, well, I've got one I'm dragging back here with a hook. So any predator has to single my bonita out from all these other ones. All right, Adam got a nice bonita, some good bait. Gonna hand it off to Heath here. So he's set up and good to go. Okay, he's ready, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Conditions are always changing. You know, if you go out offshore in Southeast Florida, there's the Gulf Stream, starts at about 100 feet, uh, kind of weekly, and then it gets stronger, but it's always pretty much running. Oh, well, I had a little bit of a run just for a second. Something got the tail pretty good. Looks like it was probably either a, a pretty sizable Ciro mackerel or maybe a Kubera. Time to go find another bait. But hey, that's a good sign. It's one of the bigger baits. I was worried that maybe they were keyed in on the smaller bonita, but obviously they're going after the bigger ones too. Feed him to the fishes. And I mean, I'm surrounded by bait right now, so this should only take a second to get another one. What happened, Mike? I got taxed. Yeah. Dude, that looks like Kubera. This is what happens in Panama. All right, so I'm gonna switch up taxis a little bit. Uh, my my bonita, my live bonita, the bigger ones, they keep getting short struck, so they're they're taking the tails. So I caught one of these smaller bonita, but I gut hooked it, so it died. So I've got it just chilling behind me. I hooked it through the tail, and uh, I imagine that you know there's all these schools of bonita. They're alive. They're going crazy. All of a sudden, you know, if a big rooster fish or something swimming by sees this dead one, kind of you know just just fall into the bottom. Uh, it may think that it's an injured one, one that got hit or whatever, easy meal. So maybe that'll get hit. And then while that's out behind me, just kind of chilling, uh, I'm gonna start vertical jigging. So this is a Jigpara jig from Major Craft. 
and uh, basically I'll just kind of pitch this out a little bit into the current the way I'm drifting so that by the time it hits the bottom I'm directly over it you really want to pull these things up you know straight vertically vertical jig makes sense and so uh, I'm gonna kind of double time this way got a kind of dead bait out behind me just hanging out and then uh, vertical jig right here in front of me see if we can't pick up one of these roosters or kuberas That dead bait. <sighs> yep, we're on. Fish out! Oh. 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 Fish on. Something big something big it's pulling me fast <laughs> fish on oh my god no way oh oh ah 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 oh my gosh something big something real big it's not going down in a rock tells me it's not a gubera I have a feeling it's probably a big rooster at least I'm hoping god it's digging into me it's hurting <laughs> it's just a serious fish yes something good oh, I was just about to give up on that dead beneath on the bottom I, I literally just told myself you know this isn't working let's go find a live one and uh, about right then as I picked up the rod it got hit. Oh my gosh. It's something, something big. Something really big. There's my bait. It's ran up the line. Dude, when it wants to go, man, I'm not, I'm not even slowing it down. Oh. Ah. This fish has snapped this rod in half. It's just got a lot more tricky. No way. Oh no. My odds of landing this fish just uh, dramatically decreased. Now I'm basically just fighting the entire weight of the fish. I've got no leverage without that, that top half of the rod. It's got way trickier because now I can't reach around the bow. But see, like now I can't reach around. Damn it. I'm trying to get it up with half a rod. It's not easy. I'm getting line on him now. Yeah, he was pulling me fast in the beginning. You saw that? Yeah, he was flying. God, I don't want to break the line on this. I was worried it was so heavy. I was worried it might be a shark, but it doesn't feel like a shark. Let's save this. No way. Just fought that fish for probably 15, 20 minutes. Easily the heaviest fish I've hooked out here. And uh, snapped my rod in half. And it just broke me off or came off, I can't tell. I knew I was screwed when that rod tip broke. That was a big fish. I cannot believe that. The knot failed. That's probably the fastest I've ever been towed by a fish in the beginning there. Really, it was a line failure around the hook. The knot's still intact. <laughs> that was a fish, ladies and gents. And uh, I thought I still had it even though it broke my rod. Everything seemed like it was going pretty smooth. And uh, it kind of changed directions on me, went back behind me. And without any give in the rod, without the rod tip, um, it's just putting all that pressure on my line, basically. And uh, just just too much. Those boozos, baby. <laughs> That's what happens if you're not ready. <sighs> heartbreak, heartbreak. But that's fishing. 
nice snapper. Perfect eating size right there, man. A nice little Kubera. He's pretty small, we won't keep him. What the heck can I go? See it, Austin? Oh yeah, solid cereal mackerel. They get a little bigger than that, but that's a good one. Great eating fish. That is a trigger fish. Uh, no, not good bait, not good to eat. Yeah, Ren, look at that sucker. Nice Colorado snapper. Yeah, that's a rooster, buddy. Wow. Hold on. Oh, it broke off at the surface. Mike's on right now. He's freaking out. Yeah! <laughs> Beast! Look at that fish, dude. Mike Ponce here from Fish Village all the way from California. Just stuck a stud broomtail grouper here, Los Buzos, pushing 50 pounds easy. I keep asking him to hold it up higher. He's saying that's, uh, that's not an option right now. <laughs> Hold it over your head, Mike. <laughs> Good fight. Yeah. On the vertical jig, the vertical bro. Jig, single pot, got him. Dude, that fish, man. What a beast. Yeah, buddy. Look at the Panama! Got another bait on, pretty sure. It is a blue runner. That's what we're at. So there's two ways to hook these guys up. Basically, you can bridle them, which involves wax string on your hook. Hook actually never goes through the fish. You basically go through their eyes with a, a needle, but I just like to go through the top lip with these guys and uh, works just fine. And these blue runners, you do not have to troll them fast. Just troll them slow, keep your line tight, and they'll kind of do all the work for you. Gonna run right now on this uh, blue runner. Letting it eat, letting it eat, letting it eat. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, fish out. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Ah. Ah. <laughs> well, we are, <all>, baby. <laughs> Legitimately, when I'm trolling, like that's what I'm singing in my head. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> ah, waste your time. You know you're gonna be mine. <laughs> you know you're gonna be mine. I'm gonna get you, baby. I'm gonna get you, yes I. Am. That's the theme song, bro. These fish, these fish know what time it is. Yeah. Oh, this new crazy mother...